I remember the uh, the stereotypes that were being drilled into my mind, particularly about black people. Um, it, you know, it, it's so clear to me now. It's so clearly false now. But I mean, the idea that all black people looked alike was a dominant characteristic then, and they had these shows on television called the Johnson Family for on television on radio pre-television when actually certainly and uh, uh, you know every stereotype that ever existed about black people was portrayed and emphasized and we'd, we would mail in and they'd send us comic strips and showing us you know how black people looked how they dressed um, how they thought how they talked and um, there are only, uh, I think, three times in my life that I saw blacks in Wenatchee. Uh, one I remember when I was taking a bus, and I saw this um, actually very beautiful young black woman wearing long, dangly ear earrings. And I was trying to f figure this out. She didn't look like the stereotype except for the earrings. and. And another time was when my my mom borrowed a phone from uh, this black woman. Well, I I asked her. I said, "How come you could socialize with a black woman from all you said?" And she said, "Well, she had a phone, and we couldn't afford one, so that sort of uh, excused her behavior." Uh, I remember this black woman with the phone had a daughter who was deaf and dumb, and there was this sort of middle-aged Boy Scout, uh, white, who who was all, seen all around this, the town, and uh, he had learned to communicate in sign language, so that was the first experience I actually had of seeing a black person and a white person communicating and seeming to enjoy it, but of course I couldn't understand anything they were saying to each other. Um, and then I remember meeting a, a black boy in in a little soda fountain and talking to him a little bit about our lives, and he was telling me about how hard it was for his parents to find jobs. As I indicated earlier, um, a lot of displaced people from Oklahoma and, and from Arkansas had come to Wenatchee, had ended up in Wenatchee during the Dust Bowl era and such. Um, well, when I, when I finally got to Seattle, uh, there were as I say, so many stereotypes and whatnot that just were fed every day and reinforced by myself included. Um, and I had no sense at all that there was anything wrong with that. I thought, well, at least I'm white, you know, this uh, gives me special privilege or status. I remember when I, uh, when I was about 12, my brother and I put on this blackface play in school as a fundraiser. It was called Mama's New Stove. And we both dressed up as stereotyped as we could. I was, I played the wife and I had, you know, two or three pedals strapped onto my front and had this long dress and, um, and then my brother, who was quite a bit taller than me, wore whatever, torn jeans and whatnot, and um, this play was was greatly acclaimed. It starts out where I'm saying, lay there you low down good for not much, no nothing. Well, and then, it, and then a bunch of stovepipes come onto the stage, and, uh, and my husband comes rolling in, and, you know, it's, it's a big stereotypic argument about how the husband was supposed to have put the stovepipe in or put new stovepipe in and and didn't do it and so his wife's mad at him and anyway they, they end up making up and the last line was 
the husband says to the wife, is, Honey, I'm going to buy you an electric stove. Well, that was... And, um, so as I said, by the, by the time I was um, 15 and first had my exposure to a black person on a level of equality, it was, it was quite a shocking experience. Um, went through a lot of emotional turmoil, a lot of um, intentional efforts to change my patterns of speech. I mean, using derogatory terms were just just the natural thing to do in those days. Um, I, I don't know if you, you probably know some of the stereotypes that existed in those days, or I don't know if it necessary to recount them, but um, oh, I remember I had an autograph book and I had it signed by uh, this woman who was a refugee from Nazi Germany and you would have thought maybe she could have had more sensitivity but she had she'd learned this little thing uh, God made little niggers, he made them in the night, he was in such a hurry he forgot to paint them white. I mean that was typical of poems and songs uh, that were uh, sung at BF Day School, which is just over here a block. Um, uh, well, let's, I remember that, you know, that uh, my mom was so afraid every time I would go to the central area to attend uh, one of these services and um, I'd, if I wasn't coming home, if I was going to stay at my friend Langston's house, for example, I'd usually call her. And I remember I'd, I didn't, I didn't call her one night for some reason. And oh boy, then when I finally contacted her the next day, she thought I'd been stabbed or seduced or uh, something terrible had happened to me. Um, and I, I have to say that my mother in later years... Uh, you know, moderated her position. Uh, you know, she'd been steeped in this stereotypical thinking and uh, way of speaking for so long. It took her a while longer to get out of it. Um, but like one night when I had Langston stay at my house, she wouldn't let him stay in the main part of the house. We were confined to the sawdust room downstairs. Uh, and it seems weird now to think about it, but that was the situation at the time. <laughs>